After months of speculation, hype, promises of international racing, new tracks, and a new playoff outlook for the 2024 NASCAR schedule, we finally got a look at the official schedule today, and it's a huge disappointment. But why is that? Why does even this schedule disappoint NASCAR themselves? And what could have been done and what should have been done to help make this schedule better for fans, drivers, crew members, and teams within the NASCAR industry? Let's go ahead and break down the 2024 NASCAR schedule today on Shifting Gears. I'm Alan Bailey, and before we break down this 2024 NASCAR schedule, make sure that you mash that subscribe button so that you do not miss a video, and make sure that you log on to AmericanRacingNetwork.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. This is a huge disappointment. There's no way around it. Looking at this 2024 NASCAR schedule, honestly, it, it, it feels lazy. It feels uninspired. It feels like very little thought went into it from the race fans' perspective, from the team's perspective, and that this 100% was a schedule created by TV, for TV, and with the sole purpose of signing a bigger TV contract. And I understand why NASCAR did it. They are in the position of negotiating these massive TV contracts. They're frankly rolling over and showing their belly like a soft little puppy that they can cooperate and work with TV and make their interest be a priority. And that's essentially what NASCAR did here. There is no way around that. They prioritized TV. They prioritized ratings. They prioritized the TV network's needs over fans' needs and comforts, over the driver's needs and comforts, and over, frankly, sane logic, which is asinine and really stupid. This might go down as one of the worst schedules in recent NASCAR memory. And we got to back up and really, really dissect this. I remember the mid-2000s, we didn't see much change of the schedule, honestly. And even NASCAR themselves joked in recent interviews that they knew when family members' birthdays were, depending on what racetrack we were going to, and everyone was like that. I was in that exact same boat in the early 2000s, and a lot of NASCAR fans were. And then, frankly, a certain member of the France family uh, went ahead and did some illegal activities and got arrested and kicked out of the family business. And once that happened, it really opened the floodgates for NASCAR making wholesale changes. And that included the 2024 schedule. But the person that really spearheaded radical changes to the NASCAR schedule and to the NASCAR industry was Ben Kennedy. He's the guy who really spearheaded the LA Clash, Chicago, and really, really was in charge of making wholesale changes to the schedule. And to his credit, they were spectacular. Some haven't necessarily worked out, but he was the guy spearheading everything. And coming into the 2023 season, we were told that there would be more radical changes coming down the road. But then NASCAR kind of backpedaled a little bit and said publicly, yeah, the 2024 schedule is probably not going to live up to a lot of people's expectations, but 2025 is going to be better, which makes sense. This is kind of a lame duck year as far as the TV contracts. It's kind of, uh, it puts them in a box, unfortunately, because we do have the Olympics in late July, early August. And you can tell there's a two week break uh, on July 28th and August 4th. That's that two week Olympic break that NBC so desperately needs because they probably prioritize the Olympics over NASCAR. And while I do think it's good to move things around depending on what's happening in the world, I don't think that other sports and other events need to dictate the NASCAR schedule. I do think that NASCAR needs to move away from football because NASCAR at this point is not going to compete with football. The end, period. For that alone, I do think that Labor Day weekend or thereabouts needs to be the end of the NASCAR season, and we need to back it down to maybe even 30 races. I do think that 38 races is still too many races, period. And I know a lot of people want more racing, but... My whole mentality with this schedule is that we should only be going to a racetrack once per year. And if the racetrack warrants a second date, it goes into the playoffs, period. I do not think we need to go to Richmond twice. I think it's stupid. I think it's asinine. But let's actually go through all this. We open the season at The Clash. Honestly, fine. As somebody who lives in Los Angeles, I really like this event. But if it's me, I'm combining the all-star race and the clash 
into a single event and putting it at the beginning of the season before the Daytona 500, because there is absolutely no reason we have to give up a points paying race in the middle of the season to go run an all-star race when frankly, every single lap, every single week in NASCAR, especially in the Cup Series, is an all-star race. There's no need for it anymore. So let's go ahead and combine the Clash and the All-Star Race into the LA All-Star Race next year, NASCAR. I'm just saying, I'm giving you 2025 notes right now. Write them down. I like that we honestly start the season in Daytona. That feels like what we need to do. A lot of non-NASCAR fans know NASCAR for starting with the Daytona 500. I think that that's a benchmark that we as a sport should not give up at this time. I like that being there on Sunday, February 18th. Then Atlanta right afterward? Stupid! Asinine! Why would you do this? Why wouldn't you go to Sonoma and increase that West Coast swing? Or better yet, why wouldn't you go literally anywhere else, Rockingham, instead of Atlanta? Because you're essentially going from a plate track or a restrictor plate track or a drafting track, whatever we're calling it now, to another one with Atlanta. Stupid. Really, really, really stupid. NASCAR fans, literally, week two of the season are going to get burnt out on plate style racing, and so are the drivers. I don't like it. I really don't. I think it's really stupid. Vegas, Phoenix, uh, March 3rd and March 10th, fine. It's that mini West Coast swing. It would have made more sense to go uh, from the Daytona 500 up to Sonoma, frankly, and increasing that swing and putting Sonoma in a time period of the year where a if it rains big deal slap rain tires on it and b we could actually see green racing out there and when i say green racing i mean the racetrack being green because frankly sonoma's upkeep isn't there and by mid-june the grass is dead the hills are dirt and dead grass and it looks absolutely disastrous let's go to sonoma when the hills are green when the place looks absolutely phenomenal not when it's literally dead in the early summer but that's what nascar decided to stick with after the west coast swing nascar is heading out to bristol but not for a dirt race for a regular day concrete race in the middle of march why did nascar honestly not learn the lesson of hmm don't put a race in tennessee in march because it rains and snows which more than likely it will be because it's extraordinarily cold and the fans are literally catching pneumonia in the stands which they probably will and the fact that no one shows up because of d all the above literally nascar learned nothing from before it was a dirt race this race at Bristol should not be happening. I'm a big proponent of taking Bristol down to a single race, and I know Bristol is amazing. I absolutely love Bristol. But the fact is that even the night race this season didn't have a sellout crowd. Why are we going to Bristol twice when they literally can't sell out the Bristol night race? I'm just saying, move it to the playoffs, keep it in the playoffs, a single race a year for Bristol, and make it so that we only have the night race. It's going to add to the prestige of winning at Bristol. It's going to make it so that that track can actually sustain itself a little bit better because nobody, and I repeat, nobody is showing up in the spring. So this first Bristol race, once again, will be a huge disappointment. Fans will not show up. And unfortunately, Bristol, probably in a couple of years, will be down to a single date, rightfully so. Honestly, you want a second date, you gotta earn that. And Bristol, lately, has not earned a second date. I give them credit for the dirt track. I do think it was a little unnecessary because it was an experiment that honestly did okay on Easter weekend, but yeah, concrete was better, honestly. Why would you take one of the better concrete tracks and put dirt on it? Let's just go to a dirt track instead. But after Bristol, we go to Coda. Fine. A lot of speculation about this track moving into the playoffs, and it really didn't happen. Uh, I think that Coda would have been perfect in the playoffs, or at least at a better time in the year, but March works. It's well away from the F1 race, so NASCAR can take over and make it their own. I like that we go to this track. It's better than the other track in Texas, but the date, eh. Then after Coda, we head out to Richmond on a Sunday night. Got to give NASCAR credit for this one because they at least moved the Easter race to a kind of sort of closer track. I think North Wilkesboro as a points paying race would be better for this Easter Sunday race, especially if you keep it at night. And I got to give them credit. At least you're keeping it at night. But why are we going to Richmond twice when the short track package is garbage? I don't know. Then after Richmond, another short track with Martinsville during the day. Eh, 
honestly, fine. They can honestly have two races. It's it's fine, really, but NASCAR needs to fix the short track package. Then, April 14th, NASCAR heads out to the Texas Motor Speedway. Hands down, the worst track on the NASCAR schedule. We might as well just get that out of the way. It's a throwaway race. Then, out to Talladega on April 21st. Dover on April 28th. Kansas on May 5th. Uh, Darlington on May 12th, Mother's Day weekend. Sunday, why we race... <laughs> On Mother's Day is beyond me. This Darlington race should be a Saturday night special, honestly. Or move Richmond to that weekend and let's do it Saturday night so that everybody can go home and spend Mother's Day with their moms. Crazy concept, I know. Uh, North Wilkesboro as the all-star race. Why is this not a points-paying race? Honestly, it makes absolutely no sense. And why the hell is it on a Sunday when you lose two dates to the Olympics and your whole schedule needs to be compacted? The all-star race would do actually pretty good as a mid-week race leading into the Coke 600. I'm just saying it wouldn't be bad at North Wilkesboro, but what would be better is if you did it on the Roval. Just saying, do it at the Roval at Charlotte with the Coke 600 on the big track a few days later, it's going to do a whole hell of a lot better than taking off an entire week for a non-points race that, frankly, should be a points race. I'm just saying. Obviously, Charlotte Memorial Day weekend for the Coke 600, one of the better races we saw in 2023, then Gateway or Worldwide Technology Raceway. (sighs) Why is this not a night race? It's going to be extraordinarily hot in early June for the people of Gateway. I feel just so bad for y'all. I I really do. Please be safe. Drink lots of water. I hope the track lets people bring in a lot of water, a lot of their own liquids, because um, it's going to be extraordinarily hot. It's going to be a giant pain in the ass. NASCAR clearly didn't care enough to do something about this, and I feel bad for the people out of Gateway, honestly. Then to Sonoma on June 9th for its traditional midsummer or early summer, I should say, dead racetrack, dead vegetation. It looks decrepit and bad racetrack. Fine. Uh, Iowa. This was the big one. Adding Iowa to the Cup Series schedule on June 16th. Awesome. Honestly, this track deserves a cup race. There is no question or doubt in my mind. Honestly, it takes the place of Auto Club Speedway, which cannot be raced at because they are in the process of converting that into a half mile, supposedly. I'm saying that as somebody who is currently literally sitting about 25 miles away from that racetrack. I hope they get it done. I miss the two mile, but Iowa does deserve a cup race. I really do think that. I've said that for a while now. I do think the people of Iowa deserve a race that's closer to them as well. The same reason the people of Portland and the people of Canada deserve races closer to them. Um, Then after that, out to New Hampshire. Not a fan of New Hampshire. I think that this racetrack is essentially a parking lot. I think it's extraordinarily boring. I think it's become a fuel mile race. And I do think that this track needs a wild conversion to make it more interesting. Then out to Nashville. Fine. Honestly, we should be at the fairgrounds. But... I get it. We need a race in that area. And once the fairground situation kind of works itself out, hopefully we can race at the fairgrounds. But for now, this is a really good option. Then the Chicago Street Course, which last year was a massive success from a racing standpoint, from a TV rating standpoint, from an international standpoint. Everything worked. The only thing that didn't was the rain. And honestly, July 4th weekend in Chicago getting rain. Did anyone see that coming? Not really, but NASCAR handled it great. I do think we're going to get a better race this year because teams are going to push the envelope envelope a little bit more, and hopefully the weather stays away and those amazing concerts uh, can happen. They didn't happen this last year, and hopefully they will next year. Uh, Pocono, after that, in uh, early uh, mid-July, I should say, Fine. I'm not a massive fan of Pocono, but I do like the fact that they went down to a single race because it did create a sellout crowd, it created hype, and it created a great atmosphere for that track. Then, honestly, I never thought we would see out of Pocono, so congrats to them, honestly. Uh, then, after Pocono, we head to Indianapolis, the big track, the Oval, for the return of the Brickyard 400. I do think that this race needs to stay on the Oval. A lot of people have been calling for the return of the Oval. I am so damn glad it's back because it has needed it. Then after Indianapolis, we get a two-week break for the Olympics, and we return on August 11th for Richmond, the second Richmond date. Why does Richmond have two dates? You know what would have been better this weekend, and I'm 100% dead serious when I say it, Canadian Tire. 
because it allows NASCAR teams and organizations and NASCAR as a whole essentially two weeks to truck equipment up there to get everything ready, to get everybody ready to go international. And it gives you a lot more prep time for this event. And the two weeks off is great for the fan, for the people within the NASCAR industry. And it would have been great to kind of build it up getting out of Indianapolis and heading right into Canada for the first international race north of the border for the Cup Series. It would have been absolutely spectacular, but unfortunately it didn't happen. This is something that NASCAR is continuing to work on. I do think we will be racing in Canada at some point in the next probably year to five years, depending on how things work out. But a lot of things need to happen in order to race internationally. But the big one that needs to happen insurance that is a massive massive hurdle for nascar to get through i'm hearing that was the biggest hold up and that's unfortunate after richmond uh we go to michigan love michigan honestly i do think michigan deserves a second date at this point but similar to pocono going to a single date creates that hype and absolutely lives up to that hype i love the idea of it then daytona for what should have been the regular season finale on august 24th but because everything got pushed around so dramatically, it's not. It's just Daytona in late August. And then the regular season finale is the next week, Labor Day weekend, at Darlington for the Southern 500, which normally has opened the playoffs. And honestly, I like Darlington opening the playoffs. I like Darlington and the Southern 500 in the playoffs because it is one of the more challenging racetracks for the drivers and the teams. And it really showcases who the good drivers are and it showcases their driving skills. This being the regular season finale is a massive letdown, but I get it. You're not going to move Darlington off of its Labor Day weekend date. But at the same time, you caved to TV's needs, wants, and desires, and you said to hell with the fans, to hell with how the optics look, and really, it's disappointing to say the least. I'm glad Darlington's keeping that date, but this is a massive loss for NASCAR, its fans, the teams, and the drivers. Then, NASCAR kicks off the playoffs, the 10 race playoffs with the round of 16 at Atlanta. What? Didn't we just do that? Won't, won't, wouldn't we have just done that a couple weeks ago at Daytona? Like, this is just, it's not well thought out at all. Then after that, Watkins Glen. Like the idea of Watkins Glen landing in the playoffs, I do think that NASCAR heading into New York State is a big plus. I do think that putting a road course, a true road course in the playoffs in the first round is great because it essentially forces these drivers to be good at road racing. Then the round of 16 ends at Bristol with the night race. Awesome. Love it. The round of 12 is Kansas, Talladega, the Charlotte Roval. Love Kansas. Talladega in that round is fine. It creates the chaos. We just saw that this last weekend. The Charlotte Roval is interesting. A lot of people have been calling for the Roval to go away. I'm glad it's not, but I do think that maybe doing the Roval, like I said earlier, as an all-star race makes more sense. That way we get to race on the Oval and get to have some fun on the Roval, but at the same time, Charlotte can get a second mile and a half date back in the playoffs. That racing that we saw at the Coke 600 this year was absolutely phenomenal. I'd like to see that in the playoffs, just saying. Then the round of eight kicks off at Las Vegas, then Homestead and Martinsville. Vegas will continue to be the race that defines who will win the championship. If one of the playoff drivers wins Las Vegas, same thing this year, by the way, they'll have the greatest chance of winning the championship at Phoenix, period. The end. That's just how this system is set up. It essentially means that, oh, we're locked in in Vegas for Homestead and Martinsville. Who cares? We can DNF them. Doesn't matter because we're already locked in. So for essentially two and a half weeks, you get to prep for Phoenix. You have a month almost to prep for Phoenix. That's insane. And once again, NASCAR, it's ending its season and crowning its champ out at Phoenix. Let's be clear here. The track itself, the racing itself, garbage honestly garbage nascar drivers themselves have stated that on track racing at phoenix sucks and it does it's garbage racing the facilities at phoenix are actually really good nascar pumped a lot of money as they should have into that facility and frankly they're out there to get their money back that's why it's the championship finale that and the fact that there's a lot of big name sponsors that uh are housed out at Phoenix that are part of the decision to have championship weekend out in Phoenix. And the fact that there's a lot of rich people out there who pay a lot of money to attend these NASCAR races. It's NASCAR literally going after the country club crowd. 
Is that right? Maybe, maybe not. I do think that there is something to that. Maybe Phoenix should open the playoffs, period, or be the regular season finale. That's actually not a bad idea. That way you get the country club crowd, but you don't dictate a champion based off of a garbage racetrack that hasn't seen a good race since the 90s, period. Hands down, in my opinion, is one of the worst schedules we've seen out of NASCAR ever. Not in the last few years, ever. And I'm talking about going back to the early mid 90s and 2000s when we literally had the same schedule, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. This feels like a lot of rinse and repeat. Here's a look at your 2024 NASCAR Xfinity Series schedule. Honestly, I like the fact that we're mimicking a lot of the Cup Series here with this schedule. The fact that the Xfinity Series is heading back to Portland is huge on June 1st. But again, that's right before Sonoma. So back to back road courses. I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, the fact that it is racing the street race is pretty darn cool as well. Uh, the fact that the regular season finale for the Xfinity Series is at Bristol, the night race. Then the round of 12 at Kansas, Talladega, Roval. Very cool schedule, actually, for the round of 12. Then the round of 8 at Vegas, Homestead, Martinsville, with the championship wrapping up in Phoenix. Honestly, fine. It's mimicking the cup schedule a little bit. Not as big of a disappointment as the cup schedule, in my opinion, because you have Portland in there, because uh, you have other things in there that make it a little bit more interesting. Iowa's in there as well. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But let's take a look at the truck series schedule. The fact that the truck series is heading out to Pocono, uh, that it will be racing for a points paying event at North Wilkesboro is pretty cool. That's going to be a new surface, so things should be interesting there. That it's racing Lucas Oil Indianapolis Raceway Park or IRP, uh, the short track just outside of Indianapolis near the big track. I like that a lot with the Xfinity schedule, unfortunately, keeping to the big track at Indianapolis. I wish Xfinity would go back to IRP. It makes a little bit more sense. But the regular season finale ends at uh, Richmond for the truck series with the round of 10 kicking off at the Milwaukee Mile. Cool that we're going back to Milwaukee. Then Bristol and Kansas in the round of 10. Then the round of 8 uh, head to Talladega. Homestead and Martinsville good disparity of tracks right there and then once again they crown the champ out at Phoenix Honestly, it's cool. It, it's a cool schedule for the truck series um, But again, it mimics and it echoes so many issues that the cup schedule and Xfinity schedule have I don't know. I don't know what to think about the truck or Xfinity schedule. Let me know your opinions in the comments down below. And while you're there, make sure that you mash that subscribe button so that you come back for the next video. And make sure that you log on to AmericanRacingNetwork.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. Thank you so much for watching. For Shifting Gears, I'm Alan Bailey. We'll see you at the track.